when the pandemic started in the first year or a year and a half, it seemed that now we're finally going to leverage technology, we're finally going to leverage telemedicine, and now everything's being reverted. So um, it does seem that things are um, even worse than they were before the pandemic. But Rebecca, we spoke in 2018. That was, if I'm not mistaken, even before the Society of Nurse Scientists, Innovators and Entrepreneurs, Leader Sonsil, was created because it was founded in 2019. But I remember uh, when you uh, started uh, talking about how there's a renaissance going around in the nursing profession that now, you know, nursing are demanding the seat behind uh, the table because uh, you need to be included in the decision making in the processes about how nursing should be done and what kind of working conditions nurses should have. So from that perspective, um, can we just continue a little bit on um where are we now? Are nurses being listened to or not? You mentioned some of the quite troubling uh, news, but um, at the same time, we also see that um, the number of travel nurses has increased dramatically. So speaking about the healthcare workforce generally, there's been a huge ch shift uh, during COVID because now um, doctors and nurses are going to telemedicine, to remote approaches, combining, working in the hospitals, com uh, working through agencies. So, um, yeah, just continue from there. Alice, what do you think? Um, you know, what is your opinion of where nurses sit with regards to things today? You're still well, in, in, in the nursing profession. So, you know, you yes. can share why are you still there? Well, I'm still there because I, I genuinely love taking care of people. Um, my, my story of why I went to nursing is because my dad died of a massive heart attack in an, an environment where there was health inequity, lack of services. And so my desire was to improve the workforce in that sense and help to create diversity um, and to help uh, um, healthcare providers um, better take care of patients and from diverse backgrounds. So I, you know, that's a fight that we're going to, we're, that's, we're still in and, you know, still have a long way to go. So, but I tr generally love uh, patient care, but I will also say this as an advanced practice nurse, I've had the privilege of be having one foot at the bedside, one foot in the boardroom and have had exposure to the leadership, the business side of nursing, which not many nurses get. I think nurses, you know, we've, we're, we're trained and prepared to enter uh, healthcare at the direct bedside to, you know, follow physicians' orders to just kind of be a, a, a busy bee, a worker bee. And that's, you know, when we entered COVID, that's, you know, where we were at. We, ha we have nurse leaders. Yes, we do. You know, they're chief nursing officers or senior VPs in nursing. But I'm going to tell you this. Honestly, there are not enough nurses in leadership, in business to understand how the healthcare bubble works. It's not just nursing. We're a slice of the pie. And mind you, we are the largest segment of the healthcare workforce, which is why it, it just baffles me that how come there aren't more of us at the, you know, at the table being stakeholders in all of these decisions, because um, that's where nursing falls short. We don't have enough leadership um, development, um, leadership um, development, entrepreneurship, those elements, because although I love taking care of patients, this is a business. It is a business. And at the end of the day, I think uh, that's what many nurses during the pandemic have learned. Yes, we've had nursing shortage. We have workplace violence. We've had a shortage of healthcare providers and these things have led to worse outcomes. But how do you really make change? I mean, you know, they empower us to say, oh, you can make change at the bedside. Yeah, but I only have four patients. I can only change this. How do I change this at a grander scale? And you need to be in a position of power, uh, of influence. You have to have money to make these decisions work. And I think now that we are slowly coming out of this pandemic, yes, people want to return to normal, but healthcare is not going to return back to normal. We've seen too much to go back. We have. And now you see nurses, more travel nurses, um, people, more 1099 workers, people wanting to work from themselves. We've had an, ex you know, the wool was taken over our eyes and we got to see, oh, wow, this is really what healthcare is about. I want to do this and I want to do that. And for so long, nurses have been have not been allowed to do that or have not at least been shown that we can do that. So now you have a lot of nurses who are curious, who want to make change, who want to explore the business side of it. And so you're going to see different models of healthcare and delivery. And I mean, someone asked me this one time before, but I foresee that, you know, agencies actually going out of business and nurses becoming direct contractors with hospitals. I really see that in the future because... We're, we're too much of a workforce to contain. You can't contain us anymore. 
Yeah, Rebecca. Think, yeah, Taja, I think that it's really interesting. So um, just to give you an idea, there of all healthcare in, in the United States alone, there's 5 million nurses. It's the largest uh, healthcare workforce, but it's also the largest workforce in the United States. Um, but in the United States, only 25% of leadership positions are led by nurses, which seems a little crazy because actually some of those numbers roll in nurse managers on hospital floors. So um, in and of itself, the, there is a question on what true definition of leadership looks like. And I think that when you have a workforce that is so critical to healthcare, and, and in the United States specifically, Canada, uh, and in most parts of the world, nurses are the hospital system. The reason that you're in a hospital, the reason you're in a nursing home in the United States or in other spheres, is, is not because you needed surgery or you needed uh, OT or PT. The reason you're there is your life is so at risk that without nursing care for that 24-7 kind of monitoring, you could die. And Everything else could be done outpatient. And I think that this disconnect between the front line and the leadership is causing an incredible amount of tension and almost animosity between the leaders versus not. And there's a lot of reasons for that um, in ways that to Nurse Alice's fact that this is a business. Nurses are rolled into room rates here. They're strictly on the cost side of healthcare, which means more nurses equal more costs without associated revenue. So there's a misalignment that if hospitals aren't making money or not doing very well, they're going to cut nursing services, but they're not going to cut physician services or OT or PT because those are a billable service in the United States. I do think there has been a renaissance, Taja. And I think to Alice's point, a lot of nurses, because of COVID, we finally got a taste of what free market economic dynamics looks like. The value mm -hmm. of nursing increased COVID dramatically for the first time ever, increased nurses' salaries across the board in a way that we've never seen. The average increase of a nurse's salary prior to COVID was less than a 1.5% increase over a 20 year period. And in the United States, that's half the cost of living adjustments. So we were always making less than what you really needed to to stay whole with the cost of inflation. Because of COVID, we saw the average nurse salary increase 5% over that time period across the board. Now, that's still different. The cost of living adjustment really said it was 8%, so we should have seen a bonus rate of 8%, but we saw some major adjustments. I don't, I think what we're going to see is very similar to what happened in the UK. I, I slightly disagree that I think a lot of nurses, and I would love to see, honestly, a lot more nurses start their own businesses, get out on their own, but I don't, I found so many nurses are a little bit risk averse. They want to know where their next paycheck's coming from. Um, and, and they feel very uncomfortable about the business. But in the UK in 2011, we saw an incredible shift in the marketplace when they mandated nurse to patient ratios across the country, in which a third of the nursing workforce went and started to work for agency. And what that did was it shifted the power dynamics between the players in healthcare who had overseen the nursing workforce that led to an incredible increase in salaries, working conditions, and things around nursing. I think we may be seeing that kind of situation in the United States, but more, I'm actually more concerned with, more nurses aren't even thinking of going to agency. They're just leaving the profession in its entirety. And the average age of a nurse in the United States is 50% are over the age of 55, 70% are over the age of 40. But the scariest one is our new grads. We graduate 175,000 nurses a year. This last year, 70% of all nurses that graduated with this May um, no longer practice at the bedside. So we have a serious retention problem in our behavior and our best, longest established knowledge nurses they're leaving. They're going to go work at Starbucks or Target. And that's not a, that is shocking to us. And they're doing it because one thing that also happened in the United States, and then I'll be quiet, is this year alone, they have criminalized being a nurse. They, a Vanderbilt nurse who made an unintentional medical error was found guilty criminally of an unintentional death of a patient. So they were faced with jail time. And just two weeks ago, the North Carolina Supreme Court upheld a ruling that if nurses follow a doctor's order and that patient dies, that nurse can be criminally charged, not the doctor, but the nurse for following those orders. So did the risk of becoming a nurse become too great in this country today? And that's what I'm most concerned about. Um, what do you so um, when you mentioned that basically most graduates don't stay in the profession um, what do you attribute that to is it just the working condition is it also the new generation that has different expectations of what a work environment should be and continuing from there um, 
do you see any good strategies that contribute to the retention of nurses in healthcare? Yeah, I, I think we don't have a shortage of nurses in the United States. I think we have a shortage of nurses willing to work in the environments that exist today. It's all coming down to culture, all lack of training, all throwing nurses out, less training, more responsibility. The acuity levels are up. The support systems aren't there. And the younger nurses that are coming out um, just do not feel safe in their practice. And they're saying, you know what, if I'm going to kill somebody by accident, by trying to save their lives, I just can't stay in this environment. 